Hello everyone, good morning. My name is Mr. Jama, and today I would like to discuss with you uh, how to do interference analysis uh, when you are designing your microwave transmission network. Uh, so interference is uh, a problem for all wireless communications uh, and, and it happens uh, when you have uh, two transmitters or two stations transmitting uh, at the same time at the same frequency so at the receiver when you receive both signals at the same frequency you will have interference so uh, when you are designing your microwave network you need to uh, economize uh, the usage of frequency spectrum uh, you need to use as few frequencies as possible for all your links and in doing so uh, interference analysis will be very very important to understand so uh, how to analyze uh, interference so we have here three stations as you can see we have A, B and C and uh, B is our receiver, our receiver, and we are trying to see what happens when uh, B or station B receives uh, the same frequency from stations A and C. So the analysis is based on this ratio. This ratio is called CI ratio. Uh, it is used when uh, doing interference analysis on the links. And this ratio you should calculate for each link. Uh, so it's better when you are uh, doing uh, interference analysis to understand uh, the meaning of a CI ratio. So this is the CI ratio. C means the carrier power. The carrier power is the wanted power. It's the power that you want to receive, you intend to receive. And I is the power from the interference station, and this is undesirable. You have to eliminate this. Uh, there are various ways you can eliminate, as you will see at the end of the discussion. Uh, now, the receiver which we are going to take at as station B or not B, uh, the CI ratio must be greater than the CI minimum or the threshold uh, that was designed for the equipment when you are purchasing the equipment from a vendor of course uh, a specific CI called CI minimum is uh, specified by the vendor and that you will use it as a, as a baseline you need to be above that threshold to use same frequency for both links. So we, our plan is to use two frequency plan. We use F1 for this link and F1 for this link. So the CI minimum threshold is specified in the equipment data sheet. Uh, when you are purchasing uh, the equipment, it's written on there. And you need to have in your hand hand when you are doing interference analysis. And this threshold, what it basically tells us is that uh, the minimum interference power uh, that can be tolerated at the receiver without uh, degrading the performance of the reception. Um, so the analysis is taken like this. We have a given band of frequency, like 8 gigahertz as light suns by the operator and you want to use few channels as possible for all your backbone links like let's say you have 10 backbone links or 15 backbone links that are connecting uh, two different seats that are 500 kilometers apart and you need to use the same frequency for all the links it's possible to avoid interference and you want to reduce one channel in every hop of the, the route so we need to do CI analysis at every link, for every link, and for every station. 
we take example which talks about the nodal interference. The nodal interference is uh, interference that have been at the node or station is. Here we have three stations. This is station we have the gain of the antenna. This is transmitter. The gain of transmitter antenna for the DBI. And we are transmitting power at 25 dB. This is the receiver. This is the interferon. We are simulating this to be the interferon uh, station and the interferon power. The power that this station is transmitting is 20 dB at gain of 41 dBi. So what we are going to do is that uh, previously you are using your uh, planning tool and you have uh, established a link budget for each link to get uh, the the RSL, the fade margin, uh, the operating parameters of the link. So a simplified link budget may look like this. We have, uh, we have a transmitting bar coming from here, 25 dBi, the first row. We have This is the transmitting station. Transmitting gain is 40 dBi. We are using, we are assuming the system loss, the combiner is the wave guide loss is here to be 3 dB in total. This is just the approximation, assumptions, but in reality it may be different. And we have 30 km link at 8 GHz. So, with these two values we can compute the free space loss of 80 dB. These two added together can subtract from the space loss to get the received level. And from the equipment data sheets, the sensitivity is minus 80, which gives us a fine margin of 32 dB. So the receive level is 32 dB from the noise floor, which is the sensitivity. We may also calculate a link budget for uh, this other link. We have another link here. We have to calculate. So we are trying to establish the receiving level that we are receiving for getting from this station and the receiving signal we are getting from this station at B. The same we also do for the margins. So this is what we have. This is the link budget for this link. Transmitting power, the interfering power here 20 dB at gain of 41 dBi. So that's the first type. We, we, we calculate the, the receive level from each stage. Next. And you will also have, when you are doing interference analysis, you will have this information from your fender. You will have antenna diameter. You will have uh, antenna front to back ratio, which will be good to, for the antenna to, good, to be uh, to do a good discrimination of uh, signals and uh, the CI minimum from the modem from the modulator of the modem the minimum CI ratio that it can to be tolerated is 15 dB so for the first calculation we are going to assume station is transmitter B is the receiver, and C is the interferon. And from our link budget last slide, we calculated that computed that the carrier power, the received carrier power we are getting from the transmitter is meant for the IDBM. The received signal we are getting from the interferon is meant for the 8.5 dBm. So, uh, so this signal is called the nominal RX power. Uh, and when we fade this power, when we apply the fade margin and subtract it, we will get uh, the faded carrier's level or this receive the noise floor. This is the noise floor. And the power coming from this station is the interference. And this power, when it's faded by the fade margin, we will get minus 48, which is this from the link budget, minus the front to back ratio, which we took to be 50 from the last slide. And we get I to be 98.5 dB. 
So the CI ratio, which is a logarithmic scale, so from the logarithm of the receiver, the CI ratio from the logarithm, if you have division, you will get subtraction to be C minus I, which is 18.5 dB. So this 18.5 dB is greater than the minimum CI. The CI minimum we saw from the last slide, which was, uh, which was 15. It's 3.5 dB above the receiver. So this is good. We have respected the, the receiver or the demodulator or the modem CI minimum. We need to be respect all the time to avoid interference. Okay, we are going to do a cross-link budget here. We uh, This slide we took a uh, station A to B to transmitter. Now we will take this to be the transmitter. This to be the receiver. And sorry, this is going to be this is going to be the interferer. This is the interferer. So that's going to be interferer, I'm sorry. And we are going to take this to be the interferer. So from the link budget the last time, this the carrier, the nominal receive level was minus 48, and the nominal, uh, this is, again, I uh, apologize for this. This is going to be I. And this is going to be C, in this case. So, this is now a calculation, similar, the same calculation. Uh, this is station, the failed merge, the failed signal carrier, C power will be minus 80. The signal coming from the interference will be the nominal minus the front to back ratio, which is minus 98, and the CR ratio at the receiver will be 18 dB. Also, uh, the, this is also 3 dB greater than the CI minimum ratio. So this frequency can now be validated. We can use the same frequency for both the linkages, given we have the parameters that we have designed for. So the CI, the conclusion is that the minimum CI was not violated, and we can use the same channel for both links A, B, and B link B to C. A good question is that what to do when the CI minimum is violated? Uh, we get a value, C of interference analysis, we got a CI that is below or less than the CI minimum. The best practice will be to use High performance antenna. High performance antenna is an antenna that has a larger front to back ratio. And so we will see, we will see, let's take an example to see uh, how the CI ratio improves when the front to back ratio is increased from 50 dB to 60 dB. So this is what will happen. This is the calculation. Is this is the interference? This is the transmitter. The noise floor coming from this transmitter is minus eighty. This is the interferer. And the I that is arriving at receiver B from interferer A is now the carrier power minus front to back ratio which is now 60 dB and now I will be minus 101 and the CR ratio will now we get is 28 dB and which is really improving. So as we increase the front to back ratio we can effectively increase or improve our CR ratio uh, so the HP or the high performance antenna uh, is the best option to eliminate the interference without compromising uh, the system 
and uh, operating parameters like antenna diameter, antenna gain, everything fixed. If you just increase the front to back ratio, you will eliminate interference. Okay, we are going to end our discussion here. We have a question. Is the first question is can increase in transmission in station power overcome interference? What's the effect of increasing transmitting power? Before we start even the discussion, this I will say I will recommend this is not a good way to do. So this is the transmitter. If we can increase the TX power and uh, due to this interference station, the signal to noise ratio at receiver B is degraded. It is very very bad. And we may when we when you go to the system at receiver B, your monitoring tool. You will see this is alarms due to interference, the bit error rate degraded, but uh, the RSL could be normal. The, the radio, the carrier could be normal, but the traffic might suffer due to the high bit error rate. And uh, so it's increasing the TX power is not recommended. What you can do is you can track the interference station if it, is, if it is outside your system and it doesn't belong to you you can uh, search it using a spectrum analyzer um, fine you can uh, what you can do is that you can turn off you can mute this station use a spectrum analyzer at this receiver end and uh, see the frequency of the interference signal so if it is similar frequency you can change this frequency but if this is your network and you have intentionally decided to use the same frequency for both these stations then what you can do as we decided you will implement high performance antenna at these stations so increasing tx power is not a good option because it may create noise when you increase the power the signal can reach far larger distance. It might create noise to other stations in this area. And also, when you increase the TX power and you saturate your network, uh, the system will perform uh, very, very badly. And you, as I as I have seen in many cases, uh, people they they reboot the system so many times because. Uh, they do not put a margin on the transmitter power, they just uh, reach the limit. So as you keep rebooting your system, it may uh, reduce uh, your system lifetime. So this is the end of the discussion, thank you so much. Uh, we will appreciate being calling us.